And that's why my friends Jessica and Christopher invited me down this weekend because of this area and they uh, wanted me to go out in Casadega and uh, do some ministry there. And so I'm very grateful. We had an amazing weekend. And thank you so much also to, to Jeremy, you know, did amazing teachings. And uh, so, yeah, my story is five years ago today. I left the New Age officially today. It was the furniture. Okay? And all glory to God because the way this happened, it was like six months earlier. We were in December. And uh, I was at the end of myself. I was broke, I was broken, I was addicted to cigarettes, I was sick, I had ulcerative colitis, I was bleeding to death, and the only thing that would stop that was the smoking. And as soon as I tried to stop smoking, I would get sick again. And so I was really at the end, and I called out to God, and I said, look, if you want this to work, you need to show up, man. That's all I said. And because, I mean, I wrote three books in French. My first one was a bestseller. I was extremely well known in Quebec. I translated that book myself to English, and it just came out. I moved to Ottawa, and I wanted to, you know, spread the word, right? And my book was called How to Talk to Angels. And so it was extremely popular. Like I said in French, it was a bestseller. And I moved to Ottawa, and the doors closed. I tried to hire somebody, they got sick. I couldn't even see myself getting across the bridge. You know, all the rooms were really expensive or occupied. Like everything, every door was closed in front of me. And uh, there was construction of a house going on next door. And when finally I thought it would stop one morning, I hear this big bang. And then I jump out of bed and I'm so angry, you know, and I make a coffee and I stomp down the road like this. And I'm like, God, what's going on? You know, what's happening? And I hear him in my head say, your life is under construction. Be patient. And I stop right there in the room like, well, if God is there, it's going to be okay. And so that was like November. A month later, and I'm broke. Like I said, I couldn't go home and see my family. I'm too exhausted to pack a suitcase. I have no money to even make it there. I had a plane ticket, but to get from the plane to my home, there was still money needed, and I couldn't go so I just canceled that and I started to pray fervently for the first time in my life. And so I started praying and at one point I had this thought that popped into my head and the thought was, cut off your Netflix and read the New Testament. And I'm like, I didn't hear that. <laughs> and then I heard it a second time and the second time was even more louder. Cut off your Netflix read the New Testament. And I'm like, I'm not ready to cut off my Netflix. And then I heard it the third time. Cut off your Netflix and read the New Testament. And it was like, okay, okay. And I really felt the presence of God. And the fear of God came over me. And so much so that I cut off my Netflix. And I went to bed every night at 8 o'clock and turned off the lights in my apartment and I would read the New Testament and I was shocked by what I read. Because I was raised Catholic and I didn't believe in the Catholic Church because of all the abuse and everything like that. So I knew something was off and I couldn't put my finger on it, but I knew that was wrong. And then when I read the Bible and I saw what it said, I'm like, these people never read the Bible. They couldn't. How could they do what they do and ask us, for example, to call them Father, whoever? Because Jesus said, don't you call anybody on earth Father. You have one Father in heaven, right? And I swore that day I would never call another priest father. And it's like, I just knew that this, this was true. And so over a period of a couple of months, I found this video from this guy. And anyway, I won't go into all the details, it's too long. But I, I listened to this one guy that went from New Age to Jesus. And I knew in that moment, you know, he said that he was in a church and the pastor said, and God so loved the world. And when he said it, my heart just opened up. And I knew that I knew that I knew that this was the truth. And I would never have to look for anything else in my life. And that was the beginning. And that softened my heart. And that was the first of March. And I prayed to Jesus for the first time on that day. And that day I heard an audible voice speak to me. 
and he's, he gave me this message that I wrote out, and at the end he said, speak about me. And I'm like, no, nobody wants to hear talk of Jesus. Like, angels were okay, but I don't know why in my heart, I just, I was afraid to speak about Jesus. But it was so convicting. He's like, you talked about everything else. You talked about me. So I'm like, okay, okay, okay. And so I started to speak about Jesus. 30 days go by. We're at the end of March, and I wake up on a Friday morning. It's the 30th of March, and I'm sobbing. I'm like, <gasps> I can't stop. And my father died. I never cried like that. And I just didn't know what was happening. And I went out on my balcony. I'm like, God, what's going on? And I hear him in my head, and he says, today is the day I die for you. And then I realize it's good Friday morning. And that just breaks me even more. And then I cry, and he shows me all my sin. And it's like these movies going by in my head, and I just see everything that I've ever done, and I just repent. And I'm so sorry, Lord, forgive me. I didn't know. And then two more months go by. And I travel, and I go see all these people, and I go to the book signings, and and when crazy things happen when I'm there too and I, I can't tell you all the details I'd be in here all day but anyway two months later I come back home and, uh, and my business is finally taken off I have a lot of people online signed up and then a Friday night at the end of May or 1st of June I think it was the 1st of June I'm watching YouTube because I don't have Netflix anymore and uh, I follow this guy and he went from new age to Jesus and his next video was about how the New Age was satanic. And when I listened to that, I knew, as much as I knew Jesus was the truth, the Bible was the truth, this was the truth. And I cried for five hours that night because I knew this was gonna change everything. And I had left my civil engineering job five years earlier to be a New Age author and a speaker full time. And now the rug was being pulled out underneath me. So this is Friday night. Sunday morning, it was the 3rd of June, and I hear this voice at 5 o'clock in the morning, and the voice is, you are not serving me. I'm like, what do you mean everything I do is for you? And he says, when people go to you, they don't come to me. And I just like, wow, oh, that's so true. I don't go to you either. And he said, how can you be sure where you're getting your information from? Like, well, I guess that means it's not from you. And then I'm like, well, what do you want me to do with all these people that come to me, these desperate people? And all I ever wanted to do was serve these people, right? I wanted people to be happy. I wanted to be happy, and I wanted people to be happy and healthy. And he said clearly, you pray for them, you pray with them, and you teach them how to pray. And that day I was thinking about what am I going to do, what am I going to say, and how am I going to say it? And there again he spoke and he says, you tell them the truth, that you found the truth. And this courage came over me, this supernatural courage. And I knew that I knew that I knew that I was going to be able to speak the truth. And, and I was going to be able to do this. I was going to be able to stand. So this is the Sunday. The next day was the 4th of June, the Monday. And I got up that morning and I packed up my boxes and said, I'm done. And know that at this point, I never met a Christian. I never met a disciple. I never heard of any of this. I had no idea. It was just me and Jesus for six months reading the Bible. And so I just packed up everything. And then the devil, I didn't even know it was him at the time. But, you know, these thoughts started coming in my mind. What are you going to do? And how are you going to pay your rent? And how are you going to make money? And... You know, it was the fear of money. That was always my thing. I was always afraid of not having enough. And so that those thoughts started to come in. And 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I went in my bedroom, and I did what the Bible said. I closed my door. I went in the secret place. And I just said, Jesus, if you're real, today is the day you need to show up. Because I don't even know I'm going to pay my rent. I'm going to pay my rent. And I believe in you. And, and, and I want to follow you. And, and, and I don't know what all this means just yet. But I want to trust you because I've heard you and I know you're true. And I know that the Bible is the truth and you just need to show up. And that's, I just prayed that simple prayer. And when I came out, I picked up my phone and there was a message. And this lady wrote me, she's like, could you come and do a conference? And I'm thinking, this is the devil, for sure. This is the day I give it all up, right? 
And I write her back, I said, you know how far away I am from you? Because she's like up northern Labrador. She's like, yeah, yeah. And so I call her up, she's like, you know, we'll give you $750 a day to do a conference, right? How many days you want to do? I'm like, look, I cannot talk about angels. It's Jesus for nothing. And yeah, yeah, that's what we want. She said, we've been listening to you for three months every Sunday since the 1st of March. I was faithful. Every Sunday, I would do a service right online, and I would speak about Jesus, and I would share what God was speaking to my heart and what I was reading in the Bible and what I was understanding. And she's like, yeah, we want to know more. Come, come see us. And so that was God. And that one trip was more than enough to pay my rent. Right? And God was just showing me right there and then that he was going to take care of me. And I didn't have to worry. Amen. Amen. And then after that, I, was, I went online and I told the girls that, you know, I was in my course. I said, look, we can't do this no more. This is not from God. I'm going to reimburse you. And next Wednesday night, I'm going to be back. And we're going to talk about Jesus. And I'm going to teach you for the next four weeks everything I've learned so far for free. And that's what I did. And then I asked God. I was like, okay, what, what are we going to do now, right? And I opened up my Bible and it said, sell everything you have, give your money to the poor, follow me. I'm like, yeah. Nobody did that in 2018, right? 2,000 years ago, they didn't own anything, right? But not today. <laughs> like, look at this nice apartment that I have, right? And so I laughed about it and I went to bed and then I woke up and then over the days and weeks that followed, I realized, hmm, if I want to keep this really nice apartment, I'm going to have to find a really, really good job like I used to have. And I didn't really feel like I wanted to do that anymore. So then I started to look for an apartment or a room or something, and there was nothing. And I knew, like, you know when you know you find something that's from God, you know when you don't? Well, there was nothing. So I called it to God one day. I said, look, you're going to have to show me where you're taking me and where you want me to go. And right there and then, there was this evangelist, our brother Torben, and he put a video up on YouTube and Facebook, and he's like, I'm doing a school in six weeks, and if God wants you to be here, he'll make it work. And he says, I know it's last minute, but I know like, you know, God can arrange things real quick. And I'm like, oh, you are taking me to Denmark. I'm like, okay. And so, yeah, I just knew this was, was where I was gonna go, and, and in the midst of that, in between those two things that happened, there was also my baptism. And so I ended up in this Pentecostal church. And while I was there the third time, I heard God speak to me. He's like, get baptized. I'm like, yeah, I read about that this week. And I went to the pastor up front. He's like, yeah, I come back in the fall. I think in the fall, I can be dead by then. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I don't know about you, but I know what the Bible says. You don't die in your sins, and I could be dead by then. I need to be baptized. Today is the day of salvation, right? <laughs> so I left there, like, really angry. And I went home, and I'm like, Lord, I don't know about this church. I don't know about this stuff, right? Because I know what I read. And so there's something up. And then I get this phone call from a brother that I met the day before, this believer. And he says, hey, you know, can we come visit you on Tuesday? Are you free? And by this time, like, we're about the 8th of July. So one month had gone by. He's like, are you free? Well, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty free. God, like, he freed up my schedule, right? I had nothing to do. <laughs> So they came by on a Tuesday, the 10th of July, and shared the testimony, shared the gospel, and uh, said, hey, you know, do you believe? I'm like, yeah, I do. You want to get baptized? Matter of fact, God told me two days ago I need to get baptized. And so I changed my clothes, went across the street, went to the river, right there in front of my apartment building, and he baptized me, and the Holy Spirit came, and the rest is like history, right? And my life changed, and I never looked back. And then... A month later, the day I decided I was going to Denmark, one hour my apartment was rented, 24 hours my furniture was sold to the guy that was showing up on my doorstep to rent my apartment, which I wasn't even looking for, and then a week later my car was sold and everything was gone, just like that. And I said, okay, Lord, I follow you. And you know, it's been five years, and I never worked for money since. And not because I didn't try to get a job, <laughs> It just didn't work out. So that first year, I followed the Lord, and I met people, and I kept getting invited after the school in Denmark, like it was a three-month school. 
and people invited me to these events. Come and help us and help here and help there. And I just traveled for a whole year. And after a whole year of doing 10 countries around the world and uh, numerous events, the Lord said, come home and take care of your mom. And I went home and I cared for her for two years until she passed. And then when she passed, he called me out again. I had a phone call and I had an invitation. And I packed my bags and he says, you will never have another permanent address. And I knew that he was gonna take care of me and I was gonna be okay. And that's two years ago. And, and I travel and he cares for me and I don't need much. I have a little camper in the woods. When I go back to Quebec in the summertime and he asked, he told me to get this camper and then one day he said, people are gonna ask you, where are you gonna spend the winter? This winter is cold in Quebec, right? Yeah, they're going to ask me that. And he said, you're going to tell them in God's will. And I knew then that I was going to be okay. And then that winter. So, yeah, I knew that I was going to be okay. And he had a plan. And a couple weeks later, he spoke to me really clearly and said that we were going to the West Coast to do a school. And we left, and he just guided us from one place to the next for three and a half months. We didn't fundraise. We didn't ask for no money. We just were led by the Spirit, and people called us and invited us, and we went. And, and we just worked in the kingdom, CQ first and foremost and all else will be given unto you. And so that's, that's my story, my testimony, and God is amazing. And, uh, you know, yeah, just, you know, I really encourage people to go out there and share the gospel, and because, you know, um, back in 2018, I was 48 years old, and I never, ever, ever met anyone that shared Jesus with me. And I was really disappointed and angry about that, really angry about it. Because it's like, where's all these people that believe? Why aren't they beating on my door to tell me the truth, right? That I'm lost and that I'm blind. And, and I was so upset about that, that that's why I do what I do. That's why I gave up my life. Jesus gave up his life for me. I need to give up my life for him. And, and that's why I don't care about this world. I don't want nothing in this world. I don't want a house. I don't want a car. I don't want no fancy clothes. I don't want nothing. All I want is Jesus and I want to share his truth because people in Quebec, Especially, I don't know about down here so much, but in Quebec, 99% of people are on their way to hell and they don't know it. And that's a burden that I have on my heart, right? Because they're Catholics and they're New Age and less than 1% are born again. They don't even know what, the, what it means to be born again. I didn't know. And so I have this burden. And it's really important for all of us as believers, you know, no matter where you are. Like maybe you're not all called to come out like me and be mobile. But no matter where you are, share, share, share with people that they're, that they're lost and they need a savior and they need to be born again. It's so important. So God bless you. Amen.